What's up guys, in this video you're going to learn how to make one of my favorite augmented reality apps that I built in Android Studio, and this is it. If we do this, we'd be going in short-handed. Yeah, you mean because it killed all our friends? We owe this to everyone who's not in this room to try. It's not about how much we lost. It's about how much we have left. We're the Avengers. We gotta finish this. You trust me? I do. Now the first thing that we have to do is create a new project and we'll select empty activity. We're gonna call this cool AR app and the language being Java is fine. API level 28 also fine and we're gonna hit finish. And it looks like it came up in my other window so drag this over. Okay, so now the first order of business here is to download Google scene form. And to do that, we're going to go over to the SDK manager in the top right. Come down to plugins. Make sure you have the marketplace selected and search scene form. Now, the Google scene form allows us to render 3D objects in open space. So after you hit install, we're going to hit OK and get started right on the next part, which is going to be adding a few implementations in our build.gradle module app file. Now, what we're looking to add here is we're basically just allowing our program to use Google Scene Form, and that will be done by adding implementation com.google.ar.sceneform UX Scene Form UX, and the version is going to be 1.10. Now, the most current version, at least right now, is 1.11, but I feel that the app runs better on 1.10, so we're just going to use that for now. A general rule of thumb is to always use the latest version, so don't take uh, much of this advice unless it doesn't work on a certain version, and you can try to kick back one version and use that. Anyways, our next order of business here is to basically... Um, allow our app to use Java 8. And to do that, we're going to add compile options right underneath build types. And what we're going to say here is source compatibility equals 1.8. And we'll say target compatibility equals 1.8. Okay, and before we sync this, we're going to go over to our manifest files because we have a few permissions to add here. Now, what we're interested in doing in this file is saying uses permission and the Android name is going to say android.permission.camera and that is it for this line. We're going to add a closing brace and our next line will say uses feature. The Android name is going to say android.hardware.camera AR and following this, we're going to say Android required equals true. Okay, now the last thing that we have to do in this file is to add some metadata right in between the activity and application closing tags. So the metadata, what is this going to say? Well, it's going to say Android name, and inside of here we're going to say com.google.ar.core, and to follow that up we're going to say Android value equals required. And don't forget the closing brace, and we can hit sync now. Okay, looks very good. Now, the next thing that we have to do is manipulate our uh, activity main.xml. And basically, we want it to be the camera view. So what we're going to do is go over to layout and click on activity main.xml. We're going to get rid of this text view here. And what's going to go inside of this is a fragment. And it's gonna, the width is going to match parent. We will say match parent here. Now we have to add a few more things, well actually two more things, and I think that I can just say ID, yep, ID, and our ID is just going to be fragment. I know, super original. Anyways, now we're going to Android name, and the name is going to say com.google.ar.sceneform.ux.arfragment. And we'll end this with a closing brace like that. 
Okay, so now we're all done with our activity main.xml. We're all set with our Gradle scripts file and we are all set with an Android manifest.xml. Okay, so now the next thing that we have to do before we start going into our main activity is to add the video to our project here. Now, I left a link down to the video that I'm using as well as the video screen.sfb in the description of this video, but you can choose whatever video that you want as long as it's in MP4 format. Okay, so what we're going to do is hit copy here and we're going to come back to our app and create a new Android resource folder. So when we right click on the res folder here, we're going to say new Android resource directory. We're going to change the resource type to raw, which is basically just allowing us to put data in here. And inside of our raw folder, we are going to paste our video, video.mp4. And we will also do the same thing with our video screen.sfb. So we'll hit copy, go back to our app, and we are going to paste this into the raw folder again. And we can hit OK on that. And it looks like everything pasted in just fine. So now we're going to add some code to our main activity class. And the goal with our main activity class is to render a video in our scene. And the scene is basically what we see through the camera when we first open the app. Now, to render a video in our scene, we first need to build a 3D model by creating an object of the model renderable class. Then we're going to set the source of that object to the video screen file that we just imported. After that, we're going to create an object of type external texture, which is basically going to contain all the texture that we see when we open the camera. Following that, we're going to create an object of the media player, and that's going to hold the video, and we're going to set the media player on top of the external texture, filter chromatic light from the video, and we're all done. So let's get started with that, and I will be explaining as we go down. Now, our first variable we are going to create is of type model renderable, and we are going to call this video renderable. All right. So this is basically us creating our 3D object, well it's soon to be once we define it. And our second variable will be private float height and this is essentially just going to be the height of the video. And if you want to, if the height is too large when you place the video after, you're, after you run the app, you can just decrease this value here and the video will shrink in height. Alright, so now let's make some space here inside of our onCreate method. And what we're going to do in here, uh, we can leave these two lines of code, and now we're going to create our object external texture, or of type external texture, and we'll just call this texture, and we'll say equals new external texture. So after we create our texture, we are going to create an object of type media player, and we're going to say media player equals media player dot create, and inside of here we're going to pass our video r.raw.video okay and now our media player is assigned our video so our next line of code like i said earlier we're going to set our media player on top of our texture now to do that we're going to say media player dot set surface and inside of here we're going to pass texture dot get surface okay so this is all set here uh actually we have one more line of code we're going to say media player dot set looping equals to true all right, now underneath this, we are going to say model renderable dot builder dot uh, not build yet. We are going to say set source and inside of here, we're going to pass this and r dot raw dot video screen. Now we will say dot build and then accept inside of this then accept method. We're going to pass model renderable and we just hit tab, get the little arrow uh, this little arrow is brought to us by Java 8 is really nice. So after this, we'll put um, opening and closing braces. All right, and now inside of here, we're going to say video renderable equals model renderable. And video renderable dot get material. We're just kind of setting uh, different things about our video right now inside of this um, then accept method. So we're just changing a few things with our um with our model that we built up here. Okay, so we're gonna say video renderable dot get material dot set external texture. And this is going to say video texture, oops, texture and comma, and we're gonna pass our texture or our, our um, 
variable that we created right here. Okay, so underneath this, we say video renderable dot get material dot set float for inside of here, we pass e color, and then we make the comma to new color. And inside of the new color, we're going to say 0.01843F. All right. And then we pass 1.0F, and then we pass 0.098F. Okay. So I know it's hard to see. This is the whole line of code right here. And we'll just hit enter here. Actually, we're all done inside of this little method here. So we'll put the uh, closing semicolon. Now, after this, we have to create an AR fragment. So we'll say AR fragment, AR fragment equals, and we're going to downcast here. And this is going to say get support fragment manager dot find fragment by ID. And the ID is going to say r dot ID dot fragment. Now, the whole reason that I knew that we had to downcast here is because going through the um, super classes using this little handy tool here that tells us information about the methods that we can use. Like when we hover over AR fragment, it shows us um, what it extends. We can also view the classes. We can see everything about all the methods. So this is really handy and I highly recommend that you guys use that too if you wanna investigate code further. And to enable that, you go over here to file and settings. Wait for this to load up, and I believe that it's in general, and we're going to look for show quick documentation on mouse move. So that's going to show uh, documentation about the methods and classes that we scroll over. It's really useful, and you can learn a lot with it. Okay, so our next line of code is going to say AR fragment dot set on tap plane listener, and inside of here we're going to pass where we're going to create uh, another set of braces and we'll pass hit result plane and motion event. We can just hit tab here to get the little arrow and we'll create our braces once again. Needed a little drink of water there. All right. So inside of here, we're going to say anchor node, anchor node equals new anchor node. And this is basically the um, anchor that's going to hold our video on top of the texture. Okay. So, now we say hit result dot create anchor and we're all set with this. Now we say if not media player is playing, then what do we do? Well, we start the media player. All right. So now after this, we go into our else and what we're going to say here, Actually, we have a um, couple more lines to add here I forgot about. So what we're going to do is inside of this if, we're also going to say texture.getSurfaceTexture.set on frame available listener. And right here, we'll pass surface texture, hit tab. And we also have to make more braces here. And now we say anchor node.set renderable. Set renderable and we pass our video renderable. Okay, we also have to say texture dot get surface texture dot set on frame available listener and we pass in null. All right, so we're all set with our if statement here and now we have to go into our else. So the else is only gonna contain one line and it's gonna say anchor node dot set renderable and we're gonna pass our video renderable. All right, so this looks good here. I'll back some spaces up. And now underneath our else statement, we have, I think, three lines of code. Um, we're going to say we're going to create the width and height. So we'll say float width equals media player dot get video width. And we will say float height equals media player dot get video height. We will also say anchor node dot set local scale and this is going to say new vector three, and we have to do a little bit of math here. We're going to say height, oops, height multiplied by the width divided by height. Okay, and we're gonna say comma height, 
and comma 0.95f. All right, so that looks good. And we have one final line of code to write, and this line is going to say AR fragment dot get AR scene view dot get scene dot add child, and we are going to add our anchor node. Okay, we now we have completed our application. Now let's test it out and make sure that we can run this.